22 years ago, back in 1998, uh, a small monastery in Minnesota uh, decided to copy the whole Bible. And in that group of men, there were artisans and there were calligraphers. That's why they decided to do it. But they didn't just want to print a new Bible on paper. They wanted to go back to the original way that manuscripts were, biblical manuscripts were formed in, in Bible making, back all the way to the Middle Ages. And all of that was done by hand in the finest calligraphy. And all of those books back in the Middle Ages were beautifully illuminated with little miniature paintings that depicted the scenes in the Bible. And it was all done on sheepskin, not paper. There was no paper back then. So they used sheepskin. That was a, that little project back in 1998 was very expensive. And so they began the process and they began to look for benefactors. And they began to step up to the plate, not many of them. But then, interestingly, the royal family in England, you know, Queen Elizabeth's family, they found out about the project and they funded the whole thing. The project is not yet complete. That's how long it, to, it takes. Incidentally, the, the first illuminated Bible that we know of is over 500 years old. The, one of the books that they have completed is the books of the prophets. I came across a copy of it. Now, the, the, it's certainly not the original, but they have copied their work, and the copies are poor at best. I mean, uh, and some of the illuminations that they have done are in the book. This book contains my favorite book in the in the gospel, in the scriptures. It's what we're reading from today. We've been reading from the book of Hosea for three days. I love the book of Hosea and the images that come from it. And I'd like to just share with you about what that book is about and what the reading today means. Incidentally, the book of the prophet Hosea was written 786 years before Jesus was born. So this is the situation. The Israeli people, God's chosen people and their government this is the time of the kings, had become corrupted. The culture had become corrupted. And there was a lot of focus on the leaders, the kings, on special interests. And this, because of that, the citizenry of the Israeli people, the culture of the, of the Israeli people had become very sensuous and <clears throat> over-sexualized and they were living an immoral life. Expressing faith in God during that period in which Hosea wrote had become lax, it had become unfashionable. That's the image that Hosea uses in his entire book. And back then, Hosea said that the people, God's chosen people, had become harlots that Hosea said that the people had become prostitutes, that they were selling themselves for the thrills of money and pleasure. And, and then Hosea uses this imagery of God, that God wants to marry the harlot. God, in the book of Hosea, God wants to marry the prostitute. And the whole book of Hosea images God as a mad lover who wants to clean up the harlot and give her dignity back to her. God wants to make her beautiful and he wants to adorn her with jewels and diamonds and gold. And then God wants to marry her and then bring her to his palace to live with her. How you like that? 
That is such a hopeful image. I love the book of Hosea because it shows us the extent of God's mercy, that his, he is abounding in forgiveness, and that of his infinite love for his people. The book of Hosea is not a long book to read. It's one of the shortest books in the gospel, in the, in the scriptures. I think that you should read that book sometime. The book of the prophet Hosea. It's a great book and shows us the lengths to which God will go to save us.